The summer of 1970 brought a beauty in our town of Ohio by the name of Alexi Lind. The town library was originally managed by the grumpy librarian, Miss Hummer. One stern look from that woman was enough to shut a grown man up. Old age finally made Miss Hummel step down from her position, which was the very reason of Alexi's coming. The day that beauty sat down in the librarian's chair was the day men and women of different ages, who didn't even glance at books, occupied the seats as if suddenly having the love for literature. I'm not going to deny the fact that I was one of the participants, a 15-year-old girl who had a ravenous curiosity. There was no way I was going to miss it. Although, the more time I spent there, the more I found myself actually enjoying reading, especially the Holmes series. Alexei's cherub-like face was more than a bonus, of course. Any excuse was made just so people could talk to Alexei. They ranged from, I need help with this, or I can't reach that, and the goddess was more than happy to help, sporting her angelic smile every time. The coolest thing about Alexi, though, she allowed us to make as much noise as we want. Every day, that library would find itself full and bustling of people. Some were actually immersed in the pages, while most were just yapping away with friends. I was sat at the table with my group, the one closest to Alexi, and when she looked up from her book and smiled at me, I felt myself blushing so hard that I had to bend my head down to avoid teasing from my pals. Despite the lax nature of our lovely librarian, she did hold one rule. Bring the borrowed book back on the exact written date. Always. I heard one story that Randy Dower, the town's most unliked guy, failed to comply and got a lecture from Alexi that he got too ashamed to show his face in that library again. Randy changed a lot after that. He wasn't the loudmouth that he once was, and the folks at the diner would often find him so silent and staring into space. One night, my friends and I saw him flinch, shiver and cry, enough, 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 when a waitress dropped a spoon. It took so long before the guy was calmed down, and when he was, some fellows took him home. There were rumours that he got so badly psychologically tortured by shady people for whom he often worked for, that he just broke. One story linked him to the death of Old Man Weaver, but that was soon dismissed, as it was discovered that Mr Weaver slipped and hit his head hard. We never saw Randy again in town after that. He decided to stay inside his house which he also boarded up, judging by the looks of wooden planks on his front porch windows. We never saw Randy again after that, as he was laid six feet under a month later. Rumours were just rumours though, and the day I failed to return my borrowed book was the day I found out the truth. I stepped into that library, which was its usual noisy atmosphere, with an apology ready at the tip of my tongue. I approached Alexi, who was deep into reading, and explained to her the reason for my late return. I had told her that there had been a family emergency. But the truth was, I was busy getting drunk in the basement of a friend. Something flashed in Alexi's eyes, as if she knew I was lying. Nevertheless, she smiled and told me to follow her. We strided towards the back of the library, which held a red door. A door I don't remember seeing or being there at all. Alexi ushered me inside, with her hand at the small of my back, as she said, It's not very nice to lie. In a swirl of a moment, I found myself seated at the centre of the room, not restrained by rope, yet still unable to move nor speak, with what seemed like a leather-bound book on the table in front of me. Black shelves lined up on both sides, holding endless rows of books of different colours, with the same covers as the one I had in my frontal view. Alexi uttered, Let this be a lesson, before she disappeared behind the door, leaving me alone in that space of deafening silence. Then the screams came, all at once, left and right, front and back, and the cries all sounded human. Cries of pain and agony rang in my ears, as tears dropped freely from my eyes. 
as if the bearers of the voices were going through something so visceral. It was then that something clicked in my mind. The leather-bound books weren't leather at all. They were human. In my state of shock, I found myself not being able to cry anymore, as the pleads of mercy and help kept filling my hearing. I accepted them as they came, guttural sounds that would even silence hell. It felt like an eternity there, like the suffering would never end. Like I was fated to spend the rest of my life in the collection of horror of my fellow man. At the sound of an opening door, the screams fell into silence once more. Alexei approached me, took the book from the table, and returned it to the right shelf. Mr. Weaver was supposed to borrow the book Randy failed to return on time. He was supposed to read it and not go out to check on the noises in his yard the night he died. It wasn't his time. Alexei explained to me as her feet carried her towards me once more. She sat on the table, her voice lower than what I was used to hearing. Alexei looked at me with such disdain that I felt like I was being skinned alive. Jacob Summers, barely a year old, perished because of your selfishness. I will spare you the details. It looks like you've suffered enough. I once again found myself crying at the revelation that I had cost a life, that an innocent's blood was in my hands, and that I could have prevented it if I had just listened to Alexei's rule. I felt the release of what had bounded me loosen as I continued to cry. Alexei took no pity on me as she continued. Let this be a lesson, and never forget. If you tell, you'll end up on these shelves. As soon as I got home, I boarded up my bedroom. The sound of hammer hitting nails felt like my death, but I had to do it. The planks kept the noises out somehow. It's been a day since then, and my parents keep banging on the door, and it hurts. I can't tell them to stop. The sound of my own voice has begun to feel like needles piercing my eardrums. I don't know how long I can stay here anymore. The, the world is too loud. Hello listeners, if you enjoyed this story, please check out the author in the description. For more content, leave a like, comment, and subscribe for more sinister readings.